All right, everybody, what's up? In this video, I'm going to show you an easy way to fill out the unit circle. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we'll do is we will go ahead and uh, fill out the angles. All right, so we know here we've got zero degrees. Here we've got 30, 45, 60, 90, and then we've got 120, we've got 135, 150, and I'll, sh I'll show you how to get these numbers after I write them in. And then we've got 180, uh, 210, 225, 240, then we've got 270, and then we've got uh, 300, we've got 315, and 330. All right, so there's, there's the degrees going around. All right, now, how do we get those? Well, we know we've got 0, 90, 180, and 270. And then we're actually back to 360 here. Okay. All right. So just, just memorize the first quadrant, 30, 45, 60. Okay. And then to get these, you can do 180 minus 30, 180 minus 45, and 180 minus 60. That'll get you those. And then to get these, 180 plus each one. And then to get the ones over here, you've got 360 minus each of those. All right. Just remember, on the, on the unit circle, whenever you're measuring this stuff, you're always measuring everything off this axis right here. <laughs> All right. So just memorize 30, 45, 60. And then to get these, you got to go back this way so you know you got to subtract each one of them. And then when you go this way, you've got to add each one of them. And then when you come back this way, you subtract each of those 30, 45, and 60. All right. And another way to do it, you know, is just memorize those angles. Okay. They're really not, they're, they're not that hard to memorize. <clears throat> All right. Now, we've got to put the radian measure of each angle, okay? So we've got, and I'm gonna do that in a different color, I'll do it in blue. We've got pi over six, pi over four, and pi over three, all right? So in trig, that's something that you wanna just, you wanna memorize that not just for the unit circle, but for everything else. For, for the entire trig class. You've just got to be able to associate 30 degrees is pi over six radians, 45 degrees is pi over four radians, and so on, all right? Now, to get the rest of them, you've got, you've got two choices. You can either memorize them or you can just convert them. So basically, all you have to do is, you know, well, let's look at the 90. Okay, well, we know 90 is pi over 2. Well, how do you get that? Just put the angle measure over 180. See, whatever angle we have, in this case 90 degrees, put it over 180 and simplify. That's 1 half. And then you just add the pi. All right, same thing with 120. Just put the 120 over 180 and then simplify it. That's 2 thirds and add the pi and then just go all the way around like that. So this would be two pi over three, this would be uh, three pi over four, and I'm gonna pause the video while I fill this out. All right, so there's all the angles in radians. All right, now, you know, I know on some of them, you know, you might struggle on how on reducing the fractions. You should know how to reduce the fractions, but if not, 
you can just plug this into your calculator and your calculator will reduce it for you okay so so now that we've got all of that now comes the part that you probably have the most trouble with is filling out the the rest of it the points around the unit circle so just just remember that the the points here are in the form cosine theta sine theta just remember the first one is the cosine the second one is sine all right now the easy way to do this is let's start off doing the the 0 90 180 and 270 okay those are those are easy it, it's, it's like plotting a point okay it's like plotting a point so just pretend that you're going to put a point here and you're going out one unit okay you're going out one unit going one unit this way one unit up one unit to the left and one unit down all right so for this one if we go along the x-axis if we go one unit that's going to be the point one and then zero would be your y coordinate because you're not moving up or down anywhere and so that would be one zero so that tells us cosine of zero is one the sine of zero is zero all right now let's do the 90 okay so we're not moving anywhere on the x-axis so the x-coordinate would be zero and then the y-coordinate well we went up one unit that would be one and then let's do the 180 so we're going to the left one so that's negative one on the x-axis and the y we're not going up or down so the y-coordinate is zero and then for the 270, well, we're not moving left or right on the x-axis, so the x-coordinate is 0, and we're going down one unit, so that would be negative 1 for the y-coordinate. All right? So there's your, there's your 0, 90, 180, and 270. So, you know, you already know how to do that. You already know how to plot points. You learn that in algebra. All right? Now comes the fun part, okay? All right, so all you have to do, all you have to do is memorize what's in the first quadrant here. That's all you got to memorize. And really, the, uh, the only thing you have to remember is this first one is square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. That's all you got to remember. All right. And, and I guess one other thing, and then just know that 45 for both of them is square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so that that is really all you have to memorize for to get your unit circle going. Okay, if you can if you can remember that. All right, so you fill out the 30, the square root of 3 over 2, and 1 half, and then memorize the 45. That's the same square root of 2 over 2. Now when we go to 60. It's just this one with them swapped. You just you just swap this one and put it here. All right. Now, how do we fill the rest of it out? Well, remember everything's coming off this x-axis here. See, we're going back this way with it. So, as we move, just think of it. Just think of how you're moving away from the x-axis. See how we're moving this way from the x-axis? We have this. Well, that's what this is. Square root of 3 over 2. Whoop. Let me erase that because we're going to... I'm not going to put the parentheses because we're going to have to go back and add some stuff. And then, see, we're moving this way. Square root of 2 over 2. So that's square root of 2 over 2. Square root of 2 over 2. All right? Just remember you move away from the x-axis, just like here. You're moving away from the x-axis, so we're just going to each one. See, as we go this way, we go this way on this one. And then when we get here, see how we're going around here? We've got what? One half square root of three over two. All right, I haven't put the parentheses yet because we're not, we're not quite finished just because we write them down. Now... <clears throat> Let's, let's just go ahead and, and finish this one up, 
Okay, so so what's the, what what what's the problem right now? What's what's wrong with it right now? Well, we've got to know about positive and negative signs. Okay, see they're all positive here in the first quadrant. All right, and I'm going to show you two ways to get the signs on these. All right, so one way, just think of this point right here. That's this point right here. You see that? that that's this point right here. Okay. Well, how do you get to that? Well, you've got to go to the left and up. Well, if you go to the left on the x-axis, that makes the x-coordinate negative, right? And if you go up, the y-coordinate's positive. And so there you go. There's your point. And same thing here. You're going to the left, so the x is negative. You're going up, the y is positive. And then here, you're going to the left, so the x is negative, the y is positive. And there's that. Okay, I'm going to show you another way to get that also. Okay. All right. Now let's come here. So let's do the same thing. So we're moving away from the x-axis. You see that? We're moving away from the x-axis. So we're going to start here moving away from the x-axis. All right. Let me write it out here a little more. All right. So let's go away from the x-axis. Square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. As we move away, there you are. There you have it. Square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. All right, what about the next one? Square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. And then we go to the next one. 1 half square root of 3. See, 1 half square root of 3 over 2. All right. See, just, I mean, once you write this one down, you've got them all. See, just go away from the x-axis. Go away from the x-axis. What's the first one you come to? This one. That goes there. What's the second one you come to? That goes there. And then what's the third one you come to? That goes there. See that? But just remember, it's all going from the x-axis. And, and that's important to remember also because I don't know if you've learned it yet or not, but reference angles. Remember, reference angles, if you, if you haven't learned it yet, you will learn it. Reference angles are always measured off the x-axis. All right, now we got to get the signs right. All right, so I'm going to the left and I'm going down. So if I'm going to the left, the x-coordinate's negative, and if I'm going down, the y-coordinate's negative. So they're both negative here. And that would be the same way all the way down. They're both going to be negative. See, left and down, left and down, negative, negative. And I'm going to show you another way to get that also. <laughs> all right, and now let's do this one. So I'm moving away from the x-axis. What's the first one I come to? Well, moving away from the x-axis, the first one I come to. There you have it, square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. And then the second one, square root of 2 over 2, right here. Square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. And then we go to the third one, and then when we get to the third one, that's 1 half, square root of 3 over 2. All right, so how do we get to these points? Well, we're going to the right. That means x is positive. We're going down. That means the y is negative. So this would be negative. This one would be negative on the y. And this y would be negative. All right. And so there you have it. Now, let me show you another way to get the signs. All right. So if you look at this, remember, cosine is the first one. Sine is the second one. Okay, cosine is the first one, sine is the second one. So here's the other way that you can get the signs. Remember, all students take calculus. So all the trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. Sine is the only one that's positive in the second quadrant. Tangent's the only one that's positive in the third. And cosine is the only one that's positive in the fourth. All right, so when we come over here, when we come over here to the second quadrant, 
Well, when this is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. So if we're in the second quadrant, sine's the only one that's positive, so that tells you cosine is negative. So all the cosines should have a negative in front. Remember the first the first number represents cosine. So all of the, all of those should be negative. The sine is the second one. Well, sine's positive, so all of those should be positive. And then the same thing for the third quadrant. Tangent's the only one that's positive in the third quadrant. So that tells us cosine and sine are both negative, and you can see they both have negatives on them. Remember, this represents cosine, this represents sine. And then in the fourth quadrant, cosine's the only one that's positive. Well, cosine and secant, okay? Their reciprocals are also positive. So cosine's the only one that's positive in the fourth quadrant. So remember, the first one is your cosine. So see, the first one's positive. Well, we know sine is negative in the fourth quadrant. And there, see the second ones? They all have negative signs on them. And that's how you remember. That's an easy way to reproduce the unit circle. All right? So I, I hope that helped. Uh, check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see y'all later.